This is Rabbi Sachs coming to you from the Chai Center. And welcome to the Chai Academy. One, one may uh, go to thechaicenter.com forward slash academy and you will see a host of class to, classes on a myriad of topics and um, I hope you enjoy. Let us know. Let me know. My email address is rabbi at thechaicenter.com and if you do enjoy it, tell others. There's no uh, personal financial gain here, just wanting to teach. Um, as a rabbi, that's my, that's my obligation. So we have been discussing um, modern day Israel. And um, we, we, yesterday we, we discussed um, Harry Truman, a true friend of Israel, as opposed to Roosevelt. We also discussed the, the Israeli day independence, um, and um, we discussed the you know, Haganah, near Gun and Lehi and DP camps and um, the Exodus, the ship. So we've, we've gone through Ben Gurion and and, uh, and Begin. So now we know some of the characters. Um, we're going to continue with with um, some thoughts on the May fourteenth, nineteen forty eight, the day Israel declared independence. However, there was in addition to other important days on, on the calendar. For example, the UN partition, November 29th, 1947. There was another day that comes to mind. There's another day that comes to mind that, is, that, that sheds a lot of light. And, um, and, and uh, it, it, it is, um, it's very troubling. It's troubling on all sides. So I'm referring to April 9th, 1948, so it's just over a month before Israel declared independence. The wars, you know, six countries attacked Israel on the, on the day of independence, on, on May 14th. However, there were skirmishes and wars going on before, because after the war, right, there, there were Britain, um, before Britain, you know, Britain had a had an embargo. They didn't allow Jews to come in, only a certain amount of uh, per year, etc. But hundreds and thousands of Jews were smuggled, right? So smuggled into the country, and and um, there were there was there was guerrilla warfare like there is now, right? This there was there were skirmishes, there were rockets, and you know maybe not as sophisticated as now, but there were different things that there were bullets being. So there were skirmishes. So this was April 9th, 1948, and it was in the, the city called Deir Yassin. So Deir Yassin is just a few miles from Jerusalem, not far. And um, it was an Arab city. And this, this what happened there, basically began the Arab, um, and, and, and you hear this, you hear this, even till today, where people say that Israel are the occupiers and Israel are the murderers and they're, the, they're, they're this, that, and the other. So what happened in Deir Yassin is the, 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 the soldiers, Arab soldiers or Arab militants, um, who, who um, so they were in Deir Yassin and they were shooting at Jews. They were shooting at Israelis. They were shooting at soldiers. They were shooting at... Uh, you know, the Irgun and, and the various factions of the pre-IDF. Um, and, and they were they're shooting, and then they were running into these civilian towns. So on that day, something happened. That the Irgun and the, and the Lehi, so that is the, the, the um, um, two, two basically pre-IDF factions, came together, and they decided to fight back. And they decided to root out the evil that that um, of of, of um, murderers hiding behind civilians, which is happens every, every day in Gaza, every day in in Lebanon, every day in Jordan, every day in Syria. I mean, it's just a right. Um, and all agree that that there were many Arabs killed in that day, not only soldiers but also civilians. Um, 
the, the low number is 116. The high number is in the 250s. So a lot of people killed that day. We're talking about Arabs. There were also Jews killed that day, but the Arabs called it a massacre. The Arabs claim that the, the, the Jews came in and they just massacred. And those that could run ran, and those that couldn't run were killed. That is the Arab claim. That is, uh, that is why you hear that Jews are this, that, and the other, and the Israelis are this, that, and the other. This was the, the, the beginning. Now, according to Menachem Begin, is that it was a libel. By the way, Ben-Gurion believed that it was a massacre, but Begin said, hold on a second. I'm in charge of the Yagun, right? right? And he says, it was a base of attack. It was a base of attack. There was there was there was many soldiers there, many right with with munitions and guns, etc., and they were um, attacking Jews. So what we did is we surrounded Der Yasin, we surrounded it, and we announced, right, that if you're a civilian, if you don't want to get or you don't want to get killed, get out, get out. And 200 fled, but not everybody fled. So then, Begin, Irgun, and Lehi, the Stern Gang, right? They they um, they came in and they started to clear house. And by the time they were done, as we said, between 116 and 250, right? Um, and and Ben Gurion was upset. He says, "You murderers! You this, that, and the other." And um, you're just as bad as, as uh, you know, Hitler's soldiers. And Begin said, "It's not true. This is just a, this is absolutely fallacious. And we didn't, we didn't kill innocent people intentionally. Um, we warned them to get out, and they didn't get out. And there were skirmishes, um, and and um, and that, and that was that. So, uh, but after, after the area sin, after that, after that, that skirmish and the and the killings." of so many um, Arabs, Arabs, the, the, it, and this was it, this was the beginning, many Arabs ran. They felt that that they, um, they they ran for their lives. They felt that the Jews could kill them and the Jews would, and you know, and the, all these these uh, rumors that they, they would, it was unprovoked and, they, and the Israelis just kind of came in, the Jews just came in and they killed them and they're gonna do to us and, um, and, and um, the, the Arabs were actually selling in the shuk, in the marketplace, they were selling pictures of, of the Deir Yassin massacre. <laughs> what is also true is they were selling pictures of Jews killed, not Deir Yassin in general. So that was also, people purchased that as well. So it was a big, big, um, you know, it was, it was a big fight and, and that was the, the beginnings of, of the Arabs fleeing. Um, Deir Yassin is is um, is considered the, you know the, the reason why Arabs hate, hate hate Jews and because of what happened there. Now the truth is somewhere in the middle. Right, chances are there was a base and they were attacking, and and they they did come in and and they did and they did attack. I mean, there's eyewitness accounts you know, of, of a soldier. A soldier said that he uh, he came into the city and, um, you know, he, he, he took out his Tommy gun and there was somebody shooting at him, and um, a soldier, and he shot the person. He says, but then a, two civilian women picked up the gun. So he shot them too. So you see, there was, there, there was there's more to the story. But that is, you know, the, all these organizations that hate Israel, and even some self-hating Jews, they use the Er Yassin as as an example, as an example. But because of the Yassin, because of the Yassin, many, 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 many Arabs fled, and um, and that is and so that is the mainstay of the argument. And by the way, what I find interesting in this whole thing, just my commentary, is that is, let's say Israel was wrong. Let's say that it the bank, let's say Ben Gurion was right that this was a this absolute this was attack on Arab civilians and how could you? The 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 
This is one incident. Right? Let's say, I believe, once again, the truth is in the middle. There were some bad eggs, and there was they were protecting, they were getting rid of this, this terrorist base. Um, but even if they say it's true, I mean, my goodness, from the river to the sea, Right, which is in textbooks and which was slogans that we want to drown, they want to drown, the Arabs want to drown every Jew. Every Jew living in Israel needs to be drowned to death. Right, So there's no more oxygen in their lungs and they expire. Now, that's, you know, and, and, and the, 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 the horror and the evil that is perpetrated against the Jews over the years, right, is, is and, and they just quote Deir Yassin, Deir Yassin, Deir Yassin. Um, it, it, it is, um, you know, that, that, that's their only argument. That's their only argument. And, and I'm telling you that it's not so clear cut. So that was before independence. One month later, on May 14th, right, Israel declared in, independence. And remember, the Arab armies started to go to war as we discussed in the previous class the arab six arab armies saudi arabia as well got in the mix there right um and they started they attacked israel before before ben gurion announced a state that day the british said we're out the war started now there were diplomats arab diplomats right um is is um arab diplomats are, are Oh really? Um, they, they were not. They weren't diplomats at all. So we have uh, the Secretary General of the Arab League, right? This is before that whole area was cut up and, and um, you know, properly, etc. It was the Arab League, and there was one voice, one mouthpiece, right? And, and he said to the to the armies, "This is a war of extermination. We will exterminate the Jews." That's not how a diplomat speaks. That's not how a secretary general speaks, right? You know, secretary general says this is un uh, unfortunate, that this is a war. You don't say this is a war of extermination, right? And the religious, the religious leader of the time, the head religious leader, Al Husseini, right? Al Husseini said he he, he published published publicly on the radio, right? He declared that this is a a, a holy war, and he ordered. He says, murder the Jews, murder them all. Okay. That's not holy, right? And that's not diplomatic, etc. Now, they knew there was going to be a war. It didn't come as any surprise, right? And so, in fact, the Secretary of State, General Marshall, he went over to Ben Gurion and he told Ben Gurion, don't, don't do it, don't declare independence, right? And uh, he says, because if you declare independence, there's going to be a war. It was a moot point because they went to war before Ben Gurion declared independence. Ben Gurion, anyway, decided that war or no war, he's declaring independence because he does not. He does not. Um, he, he, we need a country. We need a country. And as we explained yesterday, what was in the Constitution was beautiful. So there was a war. There was a war. The Jews were fighting for survival. The Arabs, if you take a look at the map of the Middle East, they were fighting for another bit of land. They have so much land, and there's one little sliver where a Jew could live. Um, otherwise, you were subject to German tyranny, Nazi tyranny again, right? Um, and so, so they were fighting for survival. And the slogan the soldiers used then, and Ben Gurion used then, was Ein Breda. There's just no choice. There's absolutely no choice whatsoever. It's, it's um, you know, we, we have no choice, right? Um, and and, um, and, and when, the, when this war, so there was, um, as we said yesterday, a miracle occurred, and because there was an arms embargo, so, so Israel couldn't get arms. And um, Stalin, Joseph Stalin, he allowed Israel, he allowed Czechoslovakia to sell to Israel. Right? He allowed them to sell to Israel. So they had, they had, they had, they got some arms from Czechoslovakia. They, they also, um, um, they, they, they organized smuggling of arms from, from, you know, from the United States. You know, they, they, they shipped it. They shipped arms, guns, and grenades, and, 
and rifles and et cetera and bomb and, and explosives. They shipped it in, in, in humanity, in, in humane packages of, and it said, you know, vegetables, fruit, vegetables, etc. cetera. Um, you know, one of the people very involved, you may have heard of him, he was Hank Greenspun. So Hank Greenspun was a journalist in Las Vegas, a very powerful man, he ran for governor. But um, so he was responsible to, to um, he put in a lot of money, he raised a lot of money to send arms. And he was actually arrested because there was an embargo. He was arrested and finally, and he, and he was sentenced to prison, right? Um, and, and what happened was he was finally pardoned by JFK, fully pardoned. And after he was pardoned, he ran for governor of Nevada. And if, if you look him up, he was a, he, he, he ran the paper, he was a Republican, he was extremely powerful, and he was, he was a, uh, a God-fearing Jew, and he loved Israel. There were, there were Jews at the time who bought mines, and, and, and do, they bought mines, you know, if they wanted a, a, a copper or this or that, the other, but they bought the mines strictly so they can get a permit to buy explosives in order to send it over to Israel. Um, anyway, so the war went on and on and on, and Israel was begging the Arabs to stop this war. And the Arabs would not stop until they realized they may not be able to win it. Once they realized that they could not win it, so they went for a ceasefire. After the third and final ceasefire, right, they, they, um, which was on January of 1949, um, they, 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 there was a, the UN drew up an agreement, and basically Jerusalem, in January of 49, was divided in half. The modern city of Jerusalem, in other words, West Jerusalem, West, was to be go for the Jews. Eastern Jerusalem, which include the holy sites and the Holy Temple Mount, that was for the Arabs. And then there was a no man's land in between. The no man's land, of course, had wire and it had two, two, two fences and, you know, which right now is, I believe is a street, I think. But um, right. also part of this armistice and this agreement was, was that Jews will be allowed to go to the old city of Jerusalem um, and East Jerusalem in order to visit the Wailing Wall. The Western Wall, and so so the Jews held Western Jerusalem. The Jordanians captured the 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 Eastern Jerusalem. They were supposed to allow the Jews in. They did not honor it. They were dishonorable. It took from 1948 to 1967 for a Jew from Western Jerusalem to be allowed to go visit the Western the Western Wall. Now, there were Jews living in the old city of Jerusalem. They could go, you know, they, they could go. But, but, um, but, but, you know, but they were accosted and, you know, they had the synagogue burnt. I mean, the, the less than honorable people at that time, the Jordanians. So it, it um, so from, from, 19, from May 1948 until January 1949, there were a total of 6,000 Jews killed which is basically about 1% of the, of the amount of people living there, 1%. In, in the United States, you know, if we have 328 million people in the United States, you know, 1% is a huge number. Um, that was a huge number as well, especially, you know. So, um, so they, they um, so, and it took to 1967 for them, for them to conquer East Jerusalem, and that was once again because it was an unprovoked war. They, they decided in 1967 that they have a chance. They sense weakness in Israel and um, with the Israelis, and they attacked, and they, they won the war in, in, in six days. And then we got back to Jerusalem, we got back to Gol Golan Heights, and we got back, um, you know, some, uh, some areas in Judea and Samaria, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, because arms were needed, and, and they were sending arms for the United States. It wasn't enough. So it's interesting. France, this is one of the miracles we speak of once again, is that France, while they weren't lovers of Jews, 
they were lovers of Jordanians even less. So France put their money where their mouth is. They gave them a ship. They stocked it with $153 million worth of weapons. And they sent it to Israel. So there were, there were, it was, it was, it was, um, it was Jews, and uh, I don't know, six hundred or four hundred—I forget how many um, soldiers were on the ship—and they were going towards Israel. Now, when it left the port, there was a ceasefire, and part of the ceasefire was no more arms coming in. So Begin, because it was it was Irgun ship, Begin contacted Ben Gurion. And he told Ben Gurion, through his handlers, that there are there's this ship coming, but because of the ceasefire, um, what should we do? So Ben Gurion said, "Full steam ahead." Instead of landing in Tel Aviv Beach, where you have the UN observers overlooking the ceasefire, come to different beach up north near Netanya, and and that's what they did. And um, and and they they were heading heading towards. Um, Begin at that time put all his efforts into fighting for the for the old city. That's where there was you know there was a lot of wars. There was a lot of killings going on, um, and there was a, Jews were under threat in the old city. And Begin was there to protect them. And and many many areas actually even in Western Jerusalem were under attack. You know it was called Bayat Begun now was under attack. Kibbutz was under attack. Um, you know, everywhere you weren't safe anyway. The Jordanians were were uh, wanted to to you know, make it Judenrein. So um, the the um, as it's getting closer, um, Ben Ben Gurion spoke to spoke to um, spoke to Begin, and he said, "Okay, so this is what I want. I want all the weapons." So Ben Gurion said, "So Begin said, I want twenty percent." You can take 80% of the weapons. I want 20%. I procured the ship. I got the donation. Um, and um, I want 20%. So Ben Gurion said, no. I want 20%. He says, listen, if you don't give me 20%, there's going to be trouble. And Ben Begin said, I'm not giving you everything. I want 20%. So Ben Gurion, by the way, this is, this is my single most... Um, reason why I'm not a fan of Ben Gurion is because of this story. The ship was was called the uh, Atalina. Ataliana, something like that. I forget how to pronounce it. Um, A-T-L-A-N-E-L-A, -E -E something like that. Atalina. Um, and so so they were good. They were considering it bombing it in in international waters. However, the, the Jewish soldier says, we, we, we're not fighting against Jews. So they asked non-Jewish pilots to bomb it and sink it. And the non-Jewish pilots who were pro-Zionists said, we're, we're not doing this. You know, we didn't come this far, lose many friends for us, you know, our Christian friends in order to save Israel, we're not gonna do it. So as it got closer, right, um, the, the, the Navy, Israel ships, Navy ships, um, and and to you know used by the they got the British ships, and they they warned it that they that there's going to be they're gonna they're gonna shoot the ship, and and they 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 did a few shots, one of them Ben Gurion claims was a mistake and it hit the actual ship. Begin said there was no mistake, and uh, at that time because it was so close to shore, Begin was on the ship, the ship caught fire. There were there were um, I think sixteen or ten. There was in total of sixteen in good people that were killed, but I think it was like ten on the ship that were killed by, by that shelling and that bombing. The ship started to fight back, and Ben Gurion was yelling, "Don't fight back! Don't fight back! Don't fight back!" Anyway, so they were getting the wounded. The problem is the fire on the ship was getting close to where the munitions were stashed, so it was all hands get the munitions off, get the munitions off, get the munitions off. And um, and meanwhile, they were being strafed by 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 Ben Gurion, and um, as I said, a total of ten. And and by the way, Begin Begin moved it to, to Tel Aviv. 
He was supposed to go up north, but he moved to Tel Aviv because he wanted this in front of the UN. He, he, want, he thought Ben-Gurion would not act in front of the UN. So they got many of the arms off, not all. They got, they got millions of dollars off, but not necessarily 153 million. And, um, and the ship was in dire shape. And um, anyway, Ben-Gurion was, was one of the last, after all the wounded had been moved, Begin was one of the last to leave the ship. So he went on the ship. He, he, and he went on a boat and he, and he, and, and he escaped. And Irgun members were so angry at Ben-Gurion they said they're going to fight back. Begin told them, no violence. There's going to be a war. If you fight back now, there's going to be a war. There's going to be a civil war. That night, he sent out his message, his radio message, like he did every night. And he says, do not, do not fight back. And he said, and also for that matter, we've been making talks with, with uh, Ben-Gurion that Irgun army is going to be incorporated into Ben-Gurion's army and it's over. It's over. Ben-Gurion, just to defend him a little bit, Ben-Gurion thought that Begin, because he didn't, he defied him, and he said, I want the armaments, I want some of the armaments. Ben-Gurion claimed that he was nervous that Begin was gonna do a coup and, and, and he'll become the Prime Minister and Ben-Gurion would be ousted. So he was nervous of a coup. Begin said, uh, uh, you know, he had no intention of that and he denied that. Um, but he broadcast and, and he says that was one of his proudest, strongest moments that he broadcast to just basically not fight back and let's just join together as, as one. Right? Um, because he really, really, you know, he once again he denied any concept of a coup. Um, ben Gurion, he wasn't happy with with basically killing people and sinking the ship. He 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 um, court-martialed any of his soldiers that refused to fire on the ship. Right there there were there were many that refused to fire and said we're not you know we're not fighting against you. And they were court-martialed and they were sent to prison. Um, he also was known to make a blessing. Blessed is the gun that brought down that ship. So once again, I'm not a fan of Ben-Gurion. Yeah, you know, the context is he was afraid of a coup, but does that give you any reason to attack your fellow Jew three years after the Holocaust fighting for the same cause? So I have a real problem with Ben-Gurion. Um, I believe history has a real problem with Ben Gurion. You know, he while he did many many good things, this day will live in infamy. Um, the the ship was pushed out into national waters and sunk, and um, I think it was only after Begin died did they bring it up and and it, it became a, kind of a monument. While while it was sunk, while it was sunk. Um, you had divers who used to dive and basically, you know, they found guns that were waterlogged, but they, uh, for many years, I think it was 16 years maybe, it was, in, in, it was sunk. They finally brought it up, and uh, it's, it's a monument. You can actually go to the beaches of Tel Aviv, and, um, you know, there's plaques, and there's this and then that, but it was, it was a, um, a sad time. Um, that's all for today. I see there weren't many people on today. I'm just wondering if is this topic exhausted. So if you do have an opinion on it, please um, please let me know.